Hey, hello, everybody. Hi there. Is this thing on? Yeah. Hey, I just see on Slack that uh, Shem said he's going to be a little late, like 10 minutes late. So uh, just so everybody knows, uh, he said to proceed with the intro chat, which I think he means like introduce yourself. But I don't know why he wouldn't want to wait for that, because he'd like to know who everybody else is, too, I assume. <laughs> I assume. So... I think that's what we probably should do. I don't know. Just wait for him. Although 10 minutes is an awful long time. Have you all done uh, these book clubs before? Two or three. Okay. Yeah, same. I'm at, I'm at the, this would be my third. This is my very first. Ah, well, well, welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, same here. That's the first one I do. Yeah, most of these book clubs are our base, so I'm glad to see this Python coming together because I mainly use Python for my work and I've only been learning R only because there's so many fantastic resources for learning stuff, learning stats and learning machine learning and stuff with R. <clears throat> it really seems like all the best resources are, well, this is a great resource, this whole Society this R for Data Science online learning community is pretty cool. I've only been here for a couple months, but so far I think it's been pretty cool. Yeah, I am very obsessed with it. I just <laughs> heard of it from the R Studio conference oh. and have already gotten help from it. So I'm really excited to be part of this community. My video on too, so you guys can see that I'm a real person, not a bot. Doesn't prove anything. Maybe I'm just a really clever bot. <laughs> no, my, my programming level skills aren't that good. <laughs> so I'm out at the book repo, um, at least where our notes will go. I forked it and it looks like the, um, the notes or the presentation materials that we'll knit together here at the moment are our markdown files. I wonder, it was our intention to flip this over to Quarto? This is a good question for uh, to ask, uh, I guess, with Shem here too, because uh, I would be, I would think that'd be the way to go. I don't know that um, that the guy that runs this whole thing, what's his name, Jim, John the Geek, uh, is ready for John. that yet or not. Uh, my experience with previous book clubs is sometimes people don't use these this the GitHub mark the GitHub at all, and sometimes they just do stuff on the, with Corto anyway, and they just we don't have a way to share it necessarily. Uh, so maybe we can fix that somehow. I don't know. That's something to discuss. I'm kind of too inexperienced to know what the solution is for that. Start our own GitHub or you know or, or what uh, repo. Well, the repo's there, and you can fork it. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, and then uh, commit your changes locally, um, and when you're ready to get them back. Up so everybody can see them. You you um, push them to your fork and then put in a pull request, and John approves that. No, no, yes, I've done that with other ones, but uh, yeah. but I think I don't know how John would be okay with us just switching over to Quart. I don't actually know Quarto is it, it's a big shift over from using Bookdown or is it not? I don't know. Yeah, I wonder because uh, he has a whole com a test suite and everything else all based on our mar uh, Bookdown. Yeah. And so Quarto would probably cause some of those, maybe cause some of those tests to fail or something. We get to work it out with them. Maybe just wipe, have them just give us a clean repo. And we'll just start a Quarto thing going and be a, be a trailblazer. Because I know John was talking on one of the other channels about switching the whole site, the whole site over to using Quarto. Quarto. So I'm probably keep mispronouncing that forever, but um, Quarto, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Or Quarto. I, I, I see a, a YAML file here. Um, well, we could talk to him offline separately. Yeah. Well, if you're, here. especially if you know a lot about that, that'd be extremely helpful because my Git experience I'm, is pretty limited. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, all in. To be honest, um, this is also a bridge besides Python to VS Code for me. Oh, okay. And, Good. Uh, and I don't have R over in VS Code, so um, it's, uh, it's an adventure. Yeah, I do use VS Code quite a bit for my work. Yeah. Among other things, I'm not, I'm not very exclusive. <laughs> I got like our studio, I got Xcode over here, I've got Jupyter yeah. Notebooks over there. That's great. Xcode for doing C++ stuff, who knows. 
and then uh, the book is free, right? Free, free. Yes, it's That's free. Nice. It's actually it's currently in development. Yeah. Um, so it's not even complete. I mean, there's an old, the earlier edition is definitely complete, but this new version there's still. I wonder how incomplete it is. It doesn't look very incomplete. Yeah, that's another adventure. Doing a uh, a club on a book that's still being worked on is. It uh, seems to be that, really that, close that, to being done. I don't that's know. That's fantastic. I'm just looking at it now, and I see, yeah. So maybe we could have Wes on as a guest sometime. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be something. So we should tweet to him and tell him we're doing this. He might be interested. Get some feedback. Yeah. Hello. Hi, hey. How are you doing? Sorry, um, I was a little bit um, held up on the road and uh, I was thinking I would not make it. <laughs> so we didn't do any full intros yet. I thought we better just wait for you because you'll want to know who everybody is. We did talk a little bit about some uh, motherhood type things like, oh, what's going to happen with, uh, are we going to use these R markdown uh -huh. things mm -hmm. or we want to switch to Corto or, or right. we talked okay. to John, I don't know. I don't know how that would even work. It seems like it might be more eat better, more better. <laughs> might be yeah. better for us to use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Something um, more akin, more uh, compatible, more harmonizing with Python. Mm -hmm. but. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so thank you all for joining. I, I can see Isabel. We have been going. <laughs> we finished one of the Python basic, you know, for the last couple of two months, I think, right? And yeah. uh, oh, now cool. we are here, yeah. And now we are here now to do this, uh, which build on top of the basic of Python, we go to do data analysis. And um, yeah, so nevertheless, um, anyone who is not in the previous session, you are welcome. And uh, I'm happy to see you and also happy to be uh, at tonight learning together to learn. <laughs> we have been learning art and we want to see how the side of Python looks like, right? So yeah, so a bit of intro um, before we move on. Um, okay, let me start with myself. So my name is Shamsuddin and I'm uh, from Nigeria and uh, I'm a PhD student at um, University of Porto, Portugal. And uh, I'm working on something related to text analysis, social media, natural language processing. And um, yeah, I've been here in this R community, which is awesome. And uh, we are trying to <laughs> bring the Python community because like, even now the R studio is talking about proxy. So R for these years will also become <laughs> a Python community and R. So yeah, so thank you all. Um, yeah, so let me give it to uh, the next person. Um, uh, from my this side ron um yep yeah hey sham uh yeah we're also in another book club together uh, yeah <laughs> uh so yeah my name is ron i'm uh kind of trying to get started with my data science career uh second career in life I, I actually my first career was data science except we didn't call it that it was just systems analysis <laughs> when i worked for <laughs> mit lincoln laboratory for uh 10 years but now I'm kind of going off on my own and uh, kind of just taking like a sabbatical, like a one year sabbatical to just try to learn a bunch of things. I'm really just having a lot of fun, to tell you the truth. I'm not, I should be knuckling down a little bit more, according to my wife. But anyway, <laughs> having a hell of a time learning things. And uh, yeah, my background is more with Python. I've been just learning R slowly uh, because it's such a, like I just was saying before, it's a very ubiquitous tool out there to sell all these great free learning resources for R. So I've been learning R, but I'm glad to see Python being folded into the R, the R community more and more because that's a much more natural with Python. But um, I wanted to do this book club just because I, I did, I had like the first edition of this book and so many things have changed and I have, I'm kind of rusty now. I'm doing so much R, I'm getting rusty on Python. It's like going back and forth. I maybe I'll never master anything. Just <laughs> keep, it's a whack-a-mole, you know? Come on, I know, I know this one. Oh, how's that? How's C++ work? Dang it. Oh, okay. Back over, you know, so I don't know, but it's fun anyway. So, hey, it's more fun to learn things over again. Uh, so anyway, that's my kind of my goal here is to get resharpen my tools on pandas and 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 other tools for uh, Python data science. Cool. Um, yeah. So um, we can have Jim. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, my, my name is Jim Grumman. I'm in the Chicago area. Um, this is a great time for me at the end of the day on 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 Friday. Um, I've used. Uh, R and, and statistical tools for, for work for um, oh the last four years or so on um, 
on uh, call it uh, IoT heavy equipment kind of data and projects with 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 people with teams. Um, um, but yeah, there's there's cases like natural language processing and and, and some of the deep learning topics where I, I really need to understand this better, and so I need a, a more formal introduction. And and I'm hoping to get out of this at least a, a, a little better understanding of the right way to approach some of these problems or or the modern way. We'll get it put that way. So the third edition of this book, I, I think, it, it's 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 good to get up to speed on the latest. Mm -hmm. So cool. it's nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Um, Isabel, over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Isabel Velasquez. I work at R Studio. Previously, I was a data analyst, worked primarily in R. In grad school, I did learn some Python and was able to actually use it. But now it's been so many years, I don't remember anything <laughs> um, <laughs> except for what we learned from the previous book club. And so uh, really excited to get back to data analysis with Python and be able to to use it. So nice to be here. Thank you. Um... JD. Um. Uh, hi, um, JD Ryan, and I am in Washington State. I work for the State Department of Agriculture as a data scientist. I work mostly with soils and climate data. Um, I've been using R for only about a year or so, um, but mostly data wrangling and um, products in like parameterized markdown reports for the um, growers. Um, and then I've built one shiny app so far. So pretty new, but um, I use a lot of ArcGIS for spatial analyses and that um, the bindings only really work for Python, like the R bindings aren't really effective. So uh, I have absolutely no Python experience. So I'm trying to kind of get a, get a hold on it so that I can apply it to the uh, ArcGIS um, workflows. All right. Um, thank you. Um, Karim. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Karim. I'm originally from Lebanon, but I moved to the UK a couple of years ago uh, to do my master's. So I'm currently a psychometrician. I work on developing tests and uh, education for children, but I'm moving, doing a bit of a career change right now where I'm moving into uh, data analysis, mostly for recruitment and uh, industrial organizational psych. So uh, that's why I'm kind of needing to learn more about Python because it's much more powerful when it comes to machine learning, I would say. And that's kind of the tools that will be used in my next team. So I've been using R for the past uh, two, three years, I would say. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to learn Python at the moment. All right, cool. Um, thank you very much, um, Tim. Um, yeah, so um, one thing I want to ask you, um talk about first is um yeah john has already put um her markdown book uh, for us to use um but um i don't know like um uh in our last book club um thanks to xavel she prefer like um um mark a uh, quattro book uh book style for quattro that we used to uh, use the book club for the previous python I was asking John actually whether we can use that style um, that uh, Isabel put up, but uh, I'm not sure uh, because I was thinking like I'm um, using the Quattro is a way to go for Python as of to now, rather than using the um, R Markdown book club. Um, but because I, for Python, I actually use R, um, I use, um, uh, I, I use a BS code. Um, I, I mean, I don't know your workflow. Um, your workflow do you use to, for Python what is your workflow? Do you use R Markdown or do you use Jupyter or do you use um, uh, R Markdown or what do you use? Um, Isabel, I use you... uh, I use I use Jupyter mostly. Exactly. Okay, Isabel for Python, what do you use? Yeah, I, I don't usually write in Python, so I would use yeah Cordo. <laughs> okay, Cordo, right? Um, Jim, what do you use for Python? Um, the, the little bits in Quarto, just in the last few months. Okay, all right. Um, Jare, um, you said. 
I just downloaded VS Code today, actually. <laughs> so I'm hoping to be able to like integrate R and Python together in the same yeah. mighty E. So mm -hmm. I'd love to get some like pointers and tips too on how how that works because mm -hmm. right. like I'm a Python baby. <laughs> Yeah, so I think um, uh, as it turns out from all we have right now, people um, using like um, uh, Jupyter. And I think if we have this workflow, Quattro is um, much, um, you know, streamlined to our use case. Um, we can use Jupyter. If you use Jupyter, we can use that. Um, yeah. Maybe after this session, um, we can see how we can put up um, um, the Quattro style so that we can put it in the R4DS um, uh, GitHub, so that we'll be using that one um, as for cool. the. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe um, Isabel, you will help us along the way trying to put that thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So um, uh, for those who are, I think um, uh, Ron, Isabel, we have been together in the book clubs. Um, Jim and Jadi and Karim, uh, I think I have not met you. Uh, maybe to uh, give a little recap on how this book clubs works. So th this is absolutely, if you are beginner, this is the right venue to learn. Um, people come here, they, believe me, when I come to R4DS, I was struggling before when I started my PhD, I would do this, you know, I will fill in the wall is some, you know, I was so confused totally. But when I come to R4DS, I go to R4 Data Science Book Club, to the book club, to the end. I'm telling you, like, I feel like, oh, I find out because I was struggling. I find love in the community, you know, people help you ask questions, you know, jump, you know. I mean, that really helpful. And, you know, I feel like um, not in some kind of Python community, like you feel like, oh, if I ask this, it should be a stupid question and stuff like that. But this community is so awesome that I just ask any dumb question. I don't feel, you know, so this is a right venue for you. If you want to learn Python, even if you are a beginner, please feel free to just jump in, ask question, let us all learn in a funny and, you know, um, accommodative way. One thing I was thinking is like, um, uh, while we are doing this book club in some ways, maybe we can start to just pr practicalize what we are learning. We may be doing somehow um, uh, Tidy Tuesday in Python. So while we are learning these pandas, we are learning this, uh, this uh, NumPy, then we can just take like a kind of uh, uh, challenge for us. We are learning Python. Why don't we apply this thing daily? Because I do believe learning gets trick by practice. You know, it just not just like learning Panda, you know, how can we apply it daily? Today, tomorrow, you know, that's the easiest way I think we can. So in some ways where we go to some level, we can just throw a challenge for us. Hey, can we just like um, go start doing Tidy Tuesday in Python? Oh, Isabel, Tidy Tuesday in Python? Oh, no, that's just a okay, okay, Yeah. So um, yeah, so this is something I think I have in mind that um, we can challenge ourselves like each week, just follow one tidy to the um, in Python and say, okay, let's do it in Python. We'll challenge ourselves. I think I believe we can get up to speed. And uh, what do you think guys? Okay, cool. Um, before that, so let me share my screen now. Um, okay, why am I? Yes, God. Mm. Right. Um, am I sharing my BS code? Yes. Okay, cool. Right. So um, <clears throat> this is basically preliminary of the book. And um, as I said, for those that um, join us, uh, they have not partake in any book club. The way the book clubs runs, as I said, is uh, very accommodative. Just feel free to select any chapter you feel like you want to present. So we basically have, um, I think, uh, oh, it's not up to this. Uh, I think, let me share again the book website. We are, um, right on. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. So this is the book. Um, we basically have chapter one, which is preliminary through chapter 13. And if we can see here, uh, it basically incremental. It starts with the basic. Um, for example, preliminary, we'll just talk about what we're going to see in this book, book log. And chapter two will basically be like a very intense introduction of Python. It will just put everything to the basic of Python we discussed. And now it will start looking about the data structure and it will talk about NumPy. Then from NumPy, it will go to Pandas. Then it will start using, applying uh, what we learned in Pandas to do data cleaning. I mean, data loading and so on, data cleaning, data wrangling. And then after finishing this stuff, then we do visualization with the matplotlib. And now we do other stuff. And now finally, some examples with that. And they have like um, advanced NumPy. So there are some stuff that are not being discussed in the chapter for the NumPy that are being discussed in the advanced NumPy and that would work together. Um, if you look also at the um, Slack, okay, we have the sign-off sheet. All right, let me share the sign-off sheet. So if you look at this, this is the sign-off sheet we have. Um, in the whole chapters. So if you look at them here, if you are comfortable presenting each chapter, just come up and write your name, Shamsuddin. And uh, yeah, um, feel free to, I mean, as John was always says, um, it is when you um, present the chapter, you see that you really learn a lot. You really learn from it. So I encourage us, even if you are not comfortable with that, that will give you a challenge to go and learn it and work toward it. So please, um, just sign up for any chapter that you want to uh, sign. Okay, let me share the link also in the channel. In the, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, so that is about it. So each week we have a volunteer that will present the chapter. And what he does is basically prepare some notes. Um, the note is basically the content of the chapter and just prepare a note and come, we discuss it. If you don't understand something, you are free to come and we can discuss it as a community as all. Well. Um, so we have um, more or less like 13 chapters. And um, yeah, so uh, meaning we will like take some approximately, I think three months, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, um, but I think uh, it will be really interesting and um, yeah. So anyone wants to um, add something about the chapter? So we do basically each week, chap one chapter, one chapter. So if we do have basically approximately now, we can see three months. Um, what do you think about that? Anyone with question or something like that? Okay, right. So um, yeah, cool. Yeah, I can see people sign up. Great. Isabel, I haven't seen you. I haven't seen your name. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. Never mind. Um, feel free. Um, anytime. Not now. So, but um, this is just um. So um, that is it. Um, this is the as well the what we have for the book club. Um, which is basically as you can see. Um, uh, each week a volunteer sign up and do presentation. Um, then the presentation is basically, as I said, is the review of the material. And yeah, so all the videos, the recording of the sessions are captured within the, and put in the YouTube channel. So if you, uh, uh, you don't want a, your video to be uh, in YouTube, then you can mute your video, but we are all fine now, as far as I know. So that's about that. So today, what I intend to do for us is just to go through this preliminary um, and see what the chapter is talking about. Um, without much further ado, um, can you see my VS code? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, chapter one uh, is preliminary. It just tell us what we are going to see in the book and it just start discussing why Python um, for data analysis. And as we all know, Python is one of the most important language for machine learning and also um, for software development. 
And also one good thing with Python is solve two problems. Uh, Language problem, they can be used for research and also for building productive system. Um, I can say this one also is true for R, right? Um, R can be used for research and also used for building production system, but um, Python is well known for building production systems uh, a lot. So this is what they said in the book and it discussed about um, working with the data. Uh, it says, um, <clears throat> when he says data, he talk about um, using um, tools, pandas, pi, to basically work on structured data. So this is um, unstructured data. This is somehow semi-structured, uh, as we know, and this is structured. So when we are working on the data in this book, this is the kind of the data we'll be working on, a structured data with rows and columns. Uh, just we have um, our uh, data frame in R. So this is what um, the book will be, we, what we will be working on. And um, because this is a uh, Python, um, Unlike the R where we have a um, couple of um, tools we use, so also in Python. So we're gonna see NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, IPython, Jupyter, SciPy, SKLearn. I believe we all know that, but <clears throat> uh, let's go a bit. What is NumPy? So NumPy is um, name short is numerical Python and it's used for numerical computing in Python. So it's used for, because um, the Python itself, it is liking some kind of functionality. Um, it does not contain some mathematical functions to do some kind of numerical computing and it is slow. And uh, it cannot do a lot of stuff like vectorization and stuff like that. Um, NumPy was built on top of Python to, uh, actually come and solve some of the issues with uh, Python that didn't come with that. So there are many stuff, uh, NumPy contains um, a lot of data such as algorithms that are on uh, NumPy. Also Pandas, as we know, and Deployer, where we use a lot of, um, you know, data manipulation. Um, Pandas is equivalent to that, where we use um, data manipulation with that. So here is something, um, uh, a kind of comparison with uh, Python and uh, R. So you can see here, um, comparison or with R and Pandas. Um, this is some of the stuff we do in R to find this dim. So here is how it is done in Pandas. Head to find the top, D head, you know, you can see slice, you can see. So this is basically, Pandas is somehow um, um, the way we do our, Okay, by the way, this is, uh, I think uh, they are using the uh, base R, right? Um, yeah, but I believe there are some kind of comparison with that with the deployer. Um, so that's about Pandas, uh, we'll see a lot of it. Then Matplotlib, um, yeah, we have something bigger, I believe in R, ggplot, um, even the Python community, they are using the ggplot for Python, right? So um, we will see a lot about ggplot, uh, about Matplotlib, I think in chapter 10, um, where we see how we can actually do plotting and other stuff. And yeah, we'll also see what is called IPython and Jupyter. So what does that mean? Um, the book, what it does is basically, I think in, yeah. So in chapter two, the book discuss about what is um, IPython and also Jupyter Notebook, how to work with that. So if you are totally new with Jupyter Notebook and IPython, this is the absolute place to learn it. And we will see that in chapter two. Um, so IPython is basically um, something that we do. For example, here. Oh no. Anyway. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll see that um, uh, when we come, maybe uh, next, um, next week, IPython and Jupyter. So IPython is basically what Jupyter is built on. So this is Jupyter, as we can see, Jupyter in BS code. Um, but the Jupyter is using IPython at the engine. So that is something that we'll see in the, what is the relation between IPython and Jupyter in the chapter two. We also have sci-fi that we'll see, which basically a collection of packages for um, scientific computing and scikit-learn, we all know um, where we have uh, tidy models. Um, so this is equivalent to tidy models we use in R. 
where we use to do machine learning stuff. Um, this is also stats model that contains statistical analysis package. And uh, many packages for uh, deep learning, PyTorch, and Keras um, um, for doing Python stuff. Um, so that's about uh, the packages, uh, what we'll be seeing in a nutshell in this book. Uh, but it also discuss uh, the intro, the preliminary discuss about the installing of all the necessary packages we're going to use in this book club. Um, so we, as we all are aware, we can install package in Python using pip and quanda, right? So, um, but um, the book, I can think, um, uh, I must say that even the author recommend um, using mini quanda, which is basically a minimal installation of quanda uh, package, right? And um, I'm not sure why he recommend Quanda over PIP, but we will see that there are a lot of advantages of using Quanda over PIP. And also the book um, is using Python 3.10 um, throughout. So maybe if um, you kind of create environment, it's good that we use the 3.10. But also um, he recommend using mini Quanda, which is minimal installation of Quanda package manager along with what we call Quanda Forge, um, a community maintained software distribution based on Quanda. Um, so what is mini Quanda? So mini Quanda, um, if you want to install Quanda, sometimes people will install Anaconda, right? Anaconda. So Anaconda um, is, um, um, Anaconda, you install Anaconda is so, you know, kind of big, you know, it contains a lot of free installs to packages and stuff like that. But um, minimal installation is mini Quanda. So mini Quanda um, allows you to install Quanda with minimal uh, installation stuff that you need to do that. Um, so people prefer to install mini Quanda than to install Quanda. But one thing we should also know that, that it's what is called Quanda Forge. So let's look at what is that. Oh, all right. So here I put up this. Um, mini Quanda, um, why we use Quanda and PIP. So there are a lot of differences between Quanda and PIP. Um, we can see Quanda is basically, they are all package, um, uh, um, uh, they can use to install package, right? PIP and this. But PIP cannot be used to do, create virtual environment. Um, we need it to require virtual M and this. So you can see um, Quanda is somehow battery included, right? It comes with the built-in capacity to install package. And we can see here, um, it uh, package format, this is this, for Quanda, that require compilers, doesn't require compilers, you can just install. And uh, package types, you can use Quanda to install any package type. But PIP can only install Python package because you only install them from PyPy, right? Which is package um, Python stuff. But with Quanda, you can install um, any kind of package. And um, where do we find uh, Quanda package? So when you are installing packages from Quanda, they are, you are basically downloading them from a Quanda repository or an Anaconda cloud. So um, when I'm installing um, an Anaconda cloud, so this is um, where, yeah. So when you are installing, um, yeah, when you are installing a uh, packet for using Quanda, you are installing them from uh, Anaconda uh, Cloud. So you can see here, these are uh, a lot of um, packages. Uh, for example, uh, let me see this. No, no, no. Right, so these are some of the example of stuff, but uh, you can search a lot of packages here you want to install. Um, but when you are using, um, uh, PIP, you are using PI, what is it called PI, PI, right? I think. So when you are using PIP, you are installing packages from this here, from this place. So you can see here, we have the, the uh, I think number of these stuff. So you can, uh, for example, search for, um, no, no, no. Uh, you can, how do we find, uh, hmm. anyway, yeah, so, yeah, you are installing package from here. For example, I can say maybe I'm searching for package that relate to NLP. I can just search something like this. You can see. So this is, I mean, a place where we are installing uh, stuff. For more or less like where when we are using R, we are installing packages from uh, um, what do you call this? Place? <laughs> 
uh, crown. Yeah, so crown. Yeah, so when we are installing from Python, um, using PIP, we are installing from here. But when we are installing using Quanda, we are installing from that. But it turns out that you may try to install a package and that is from um, Anaconda using Quanda, but you may find that, oh no, it's not available in Quanda. So you need to use PIP to install the package. So there are some scenario with that. You try to use Quanda to install package, but the package is not available in um, Anaconda cloud. So you can use PIP to install that. So that's one way to do that. But and the, um, and the nice thing, I just want to point out the nice thing about that is if the PIP will work with the environments that you make with Conda. Yeah, right? yes, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, um, even if um, the Conda doesn't work, you install with PIP, then it will work inside the Conda environment you have. So yeah, that's it's good. It's always huh? good to make a separate little environment for your projects because then when you do install something with PIP and it, didn't, it messes something up, you can always go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so we can see that many, I mean, Quanda can be used to create virtual environment, but PIP cannot. So why do we need to create virtual environment? So virtual environment allow us to isolate our um, projects. Yeah, you know, if you have a different project, uh, project A, project B, and you have different kind of installation, it's good to create a virtual environment so that you can do separate installation of all your packages and stuff like that. So when everything goes wrong, you, I mean, it is only your environment that does that. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, there is also another thing called Miniforge. Um, so Miniforge is basically, so when you install package with Quanda, so let me show this. So when I install package with Quanda, so for example here, um, so, um, so when I install packet with Quanda, so for example, um, hmm, what do I want to say? Oh yeah. So when I install packet with Quanda, so for example, I say Quanda um, install um, uh, maybe something like this, right? To install some packages. Um, what is happening is that, as I said, you are installing package from uh, Anaconda. But Anaconda or Quanda, in some ways, previously they don't support what we call ARM 64. So Miniforge was like brought into life. So Miniforge is a community Quanda for driven minimalistic Quanda installer. Substance packet installation comes just from Quanda Forge. So what is happening is that if you come here and see, okay, Quanda Forge. So yeah, so you can see this is called Quanda Forge. Um, if we go to the GitHub repository here, Quanda, where is the? Hmm. Where is the? Oh, where is the main repo? Oh yeah, mini forge. Okay, yeah. So you can see that um, this is basically um, uh, another thing that uh, the book um, asks us to uh, set up. So when I install um, Quanda and install package with Quanda, basically I'm installing that package from Anaconda or Anaconda Cloud. But some package, when ARM was developed, I, I think here it says um, Miniport started because Miniconda does not support I. Act 64, which is basically uh, a kind of CPU like M1, like uh, Apple CPU now, they are using um, uh, this version of uh, CPU. Uh, so mm, at that point, Quanda does not support ARM. Um, so if you have a computer with this processor, then if you use Quanda, it will not be able to do that. So people just come up with community development with something Miniforge, which is this one that support that ARM um, CPU. And now it is now moving away faster than even um, Quanda. So people now prefer to use Miniforge uh, to install packages because one, there are a lot of disadvantages. Packages are updated quite often. Some packages you may find them in Miniforge, but they are not under Anaconda. So how can we 
actually have mini forge to be that. So the book says that after you do installation of Quanda, what you need to do to actually, uh, you need to add Quanda this command so that you are telling the computer when you are installing package with Quanda, use this Quanda forge as the main channel. So let's assume I now install Quanda. So anytime I install in a package, I'm installing package from Anaconda. But we want to default, change that default so that it is not installing from Anaconda. We are using Quanda Forge. So when you install this, this means that, and now you set this as priority. It means whenever you are installing package using Quanda, then it's not use installing um, using the main Quanda we know from Anaconda. It will be using the channel as Quanda Forge. So this is one thing that the book author recommend that we can install. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know if anyone wants to add something regarding the Quanda Forge and this, but this is what um, I understand. Anyone wants to add something regarding this? Right, so um, this is the link. Let me share the link. Um, yeah, so um, many people now are using this uh, Quanda. In fact, you will still be using your Quanda. So when you want to install package, um, there is nothing changes. So when you want to install package with Quanda, all you need to do is say Quanda install, install whatsoever, um, you, a circuit line. You just use the way you are doing use normal Quanda, but you change the channels to be using Quanda Forge and you change. So you are not downloading from Anaconda Club, but you are downloading from Quanda Forge. And there are a lot of advantage with that. And that's what the book says. Um, yeah, so again, if you look at it here, you can see that um, there are a lot of stuff you can do with Miniforge. Um, you can um, basically, there, there is an even one that uh, you can install with what is called Mamba Forge, Mamba Forge. So this is also another variant of uh, Miniforge, which is basically the same thing but with enhanced speed performance, because this Mamba Forge is implemented in C++ and now it's enhanced, it has um, somehow kind of uh, speed, which is basically better than, um, yeah, than the other ones. Um, I try using uh, to install the, uh, that one. Um, let me show you uh, how we do that. Well, let me add this. Um, okay, yeah. Um, can you see my terminal? Can you see my terminal? Yes. Okay, so this is my terminal, right? So you can see here. So um, if you want to install all the packages that this book comes with, you can install them with this um, command. So here you can see I have Quanda installed. So these are the packages that this book comes with. This beautiful saw this guy, this guy, this guy, you know, all this stuff. Um, these are the things that the book comes with. So if you want to install them, we can install them like this. So we are using this, um, if we are coming to the next line, you remember, but uh, if you are using Windows, you need to put something. I don't know what the book says. Uh, so if I use Quanda, I can install them, but um, I already installed member. So now here I'm using member, member. So it more or less like Quanda. So when I say member, um, what happened? Mamba, oh, sorry, I am using Mamba. So this is it, Mamba, this guy, so I can install it. Mamba, okay. Yeah, so you can see, I mean, so you can see this Mamba is so fast, you know, so the implementation is in C++, so it, it is still the same thing, but it just like um, a variant, um, if you want to see it or something like that. But I, because I already installed it, so yeah. So this is also another way to do some kind of stuff. So here, um, yeah, so how can I work with Quanda? So for those that are new to Quanda, um, what I like is um, I'm using something called TLDR. So I naturally forget some commands to work with Quanda. So what I do is like, um, I use this command TLDR. I say Quanda, um, um, Quanda. So this command will give me a list of stuff to use with Quanda. So if I want to create an environment with Quanda, I can say Quanda create. 
then I give the name of environment, it will give me the command to do. If I want to list all the command for Quanda, I will just copy it here and do this and now see the environment I have, right? Um, if I want to see this, you know, all these are available. So you can check this uh, TLDR. Um, I really like it. Not only Quanda, anything you want to work with TLDR. Um, TLDR. Um, so if I want to do like a, uh, anything you want to do, you can add, you can, yeah. So uh, if you look at this, um, for those that didn't know that, TLDR, GitHub. So you can see this. So this is just like a cheat sheet. So instead for us to become, you know, remembering stuff. So this is just like, you can see TLDR tar. So if you want to do tar, uh, something like that, so you can just, that uh, it will just show you this stuff. So this is what, I, so if I can say TLDR um, CP, you know, command CP, you can see a lot of other stuff. How can you copy that? It just remember you. But um, I'm using um, a terminal um, that is for me, um, easier for me. I don't even use um, that. So I'm using another terminal called WAP and it's using natural language, incredible. So for example, I want to copy some, I, I forget how, which, what kind of command to use to do copy. I can just do something like this, um, yeah. um, um, command to create Conda environment, 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 environment. Can you see that? So you can see this is natural function, right? I can just, can you see? Now this gives me the command. So I can see input, Conda create, you can see, I can just change the name, Python 54D, 54 data science. Yes, I just, you know, so anything you can ask, you know, so this for now, it because I need to remember a lot about this terminal actually. So for example, you can even put a cursor here to know what this command create is doing. Create a new, can you see that it said create a new quanta environment? You can put it here minus n to see name of environment. Can you see that? You know, uh, so this is something um, I really enjoy um, working with that. So um, if you want to create an environment, uh, with that, so that's how we can do it. So let me go back. Um, yeah, by, by the way, this terminal call work only works on Mac. Um, yep. Um, also, um, you can do a lot of things, not only, um, yeah, how to, how to copy file, how to copy file in Python. So can you see like it gives you import you, you know, you know, can you see that? So this is um, a mo language model train on GPT-3, I think, right? So it's using deep learning at the back end. Uh, WAP is using deep learning GPT-3 to translate this um, natural language to command to everything, you know, yep. So, yeah, so you can see this is what I said, like if you wanna create Conda environment, Conda create, you know, uh, name of the uh, environment and you know put the uh, python you want to install and now yeah so uh, okay and now we, you, after you create here we create a, an environment called python pi data book and now we can actually activate the environment conda so let me just try to see that so here conda um uh, let me delete this guy so you can see here, I create, I'm creating a, a, a Conda environment. I can just stop that. So here is, um, so um, yeah, so we can see this one is working, but let me interp interrupt this guy. So I interrupt this guy. Let me say, okay, let me use a uh, Mamba. Wow, can you see the speed? Do you notice like how Mamba actually create the environment faster than using Quanda? So if I wanna create and um, activate the environment, I can just say Mamba activate this guy. So yeah, I can see actually the difference. So you can see Mamba. So, okay, 
run Mamba in it. I don't know. To be able to run Mamba actually, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Anyway, let's go back. I don't know what this guy is saying. So, um, but that's basically how you activate the environment. And now you can, after we activate the environment, we will see that our environment changes here, the name, and then we can install all other stuff we needed. So this is basically how to install that. And this is um, how to install all the packages in the book and as we saw. Um, yeah, so should I use PIP or Quanda? So um, what he suggested is that um, while you can use both Quanda and PIP to install package, you should avoid updating packages already installed with Quanda using PIP and vice versa. As so doing can lead to environment problem. I recommend sticking to Quanda if you can and falling back on PIP only for packages which are only available with Quanda install. So as we already said, um, just stick with Quanda, but um, only packages that are not available with Quanda, then you can use PIP. Um, yeah, so uh, we can see that we can do a lot of this quanda, we can create environment, and this is the TLDR stuff I talk about. And now, yeah, finally, these are some of the chapter we already saw. And um, yeah, so this is uh, the end of this uh, discussion about the preliminary, which is basically to talk about what are we gonna see in the book flow in the next couple of, I think, 13 weeks. And uh, yeah, I'm excited, like um, we are gonna have a really fun learning uh, together. Um, yeah, anyone wants to ask something uh, based on what we have just seen now? Just check in, will you have this uh, notebook available on the in the book? Um, so I can use those comic commands. <laughs> oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. thank you. Okay, cool. So, Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Sorry, I have I have a quick question. Do you know if there's any equivalent of warp for Windows? Have you oh. heard of anything similar? <laughs> is it good? You, it seems cool, right? <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. So I use a Mac, but for uh, for work, I use uh, Windows. So that's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I think this is the first of it is kind. Um, wow. Um, Isabel, do you have any idea about something related that looks like this? Wow. Well? No, I have. I only use a Mac. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think um, maybe they are saying if you look at their website, um, they are talking about support maybe to Windows. I think they were saying it's coming. I mean, it's really awesome. Now I don't really um care to remember all those commands now i just put it in the you know what just ask just give me the command and just try to use and um, it's really awesome to do that for me yeah so anyone with question um jadi um do you have any question i am trying to figure out how to install mamba because my i was trying to install the packages from the book earlier they're very very slow and so i'm super impressed with ah. how fast mamba was so, um, yeah we can walk through mamba now right if um you guys are available um for the next five minutes let me show how we can work with mamba right without are you good okay i would love let's, that okay let's see that um Okay. Uh, so, right. So let's look at the, this guy. Okay. So this is it. So, um, are you using um, Mac? No, I'm on a Windows. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm also on like a. Uh, work computer yeah. so like i have to try to get around the admin permissions like sometimes like downloading from github works and sometimes it doesn't uh -huh. as far as like asking for admin permissions mm -hmm. okay yeah so i think i think it's easy like um mamba porch what you need to do is just come to windows i think here um try to um download this guy i think that's what i did i download this guy and install it um yeah uh yeah, so if you can download this um, for Mac, we can download it. But I think it's really 
So, um, but you should know that um, when you install this Mamba, you will be using like Mamba instead of Konda, which is still the same and is using uh, everything, but I think it's really fast. Uh, um, do you have any error while trying to do the installation or what? I am downloading it right now. Ah, oh, okay, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, okay. If, I mean, if you have any question, now we can chat in the Slack so that we can basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just install with Conda, is that what you did? Conda install Mamba, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Oh, you, you use Conda install Mamba? That's what I'm asking, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I think it works. Um, <laughs> I didn't do that actually to install from Ezon Quanda. Uh, what I did was basically to download it uh, from this. But I think I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it may work. Quanda, you can install Mamba with that. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, let's uh, let's see who will sign up for the. Okay. So nobody signed up for the chapter two. So yeah, I can volunteer. So Shamsuddin has volunteer. So I'm gonna volunteer and discuss chapter two next week, and uh, yeah, to open the <laughs> book club uh, Python session. So it is awesome today. I think we have a good start to see how the book clubs will work and what we're gonna see. Um, yeah, if you have any question, yeah, anyone with question? Just one question: Are you gonna work with John the Geek and Isabella then about getting uh, switching us over to using Quarto? Is that what you said you're gonna do? Yeah. So. What is happening, I think the reason why John maybe is taking time because like he has some kind of GitHub setup that works with um, R Markdown. He created, I think a package that he automate this process to put this stuff in GitHub, but he hasn't created um, a, a package, a way to automate putting with um, uh, with the Quattro. So what if our you just let us wipe, you know, just use a blank re repo and just do it the hard way, I guess, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> So I think what we can see, like um, John, let's just put um, without package, or let's just pull out the uh, Quattro stuff, um, the format, just at the GitHub, um, just the way it the book clubs run previously without his own package, because he create I think package that he streamlined this creating process. So if we can just create uh, have um, a, um, a, a Quattro book club with everything the folder as uh, uh, Isabel, um, uh, I think the last time. So we can ask John, we can just put that um, book in the R4DS GitHub so that we can be pulling it up and pushing it That'd there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's maybe, I think we come up. Um, Isabel, I don't know if you can help us we put the book club together, book design. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. I can do that. And All right. Maybe, um, next chapter i can also walk through like how to how to update exactly. yeah okay. yes be cool. cool so yeah to, to reiterate um before quattro um was announced like in our studio i was a little i was already familiar with quattro because sml taught us <laughs> yeah in fact um, yeah in fact i'm using like um isabel github um, um i mean uh, blog um, blog. So since then, I started using blog from Isabel's blog template. I just pock it and just edit the heading and put my name. <laughs> yeah, it was really awesome. I mean, I like really like Quattro. It is so damn easier to work on with both R, Python, you know, to use book, to use, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, um, uh, to use um, like um, the uh, uh what you blog so let me share you the uh my blog uh that uh, i yes i shared the blog you can see it and um, so i just copy it from don't think i am the one that does it you see it's, i just fuck it and steal it from <laughs> so yeah it looks good looks good yeah so yeah i started doing the blog but it has been i didn't write any yeah so my plan was um after each book club what I learned from the book, I will try to do a blog post on it, just to you know, uh, put what I learned because I forget. And I mean, when I practice, put a blog, you know, it just serves as a reminder. So I think I will uh, be doing so with the blog post and just writing what we, I learned in the weekly. Just you know, uh, yeah. <laughs>
All right, well, okay. I'm going to run. Uh, thanks a lot. Great job on the start here. So I look forward to more. Okay, so it is time, I think. So we see um, next week. Or, uh, thank you all. Yeah. Um, see you next week. See you on Slack. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye Bye. I'll be out of town next week. So I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.